I'd like to tell you a story about a dog named Dexter, for he was more than just a dog to me. He was my best friend. It all started in the summer of 88. I had just returned home from summer camp when I was greeted at the door by a tongue that went on for miles and a tail that didn't know when to quit. He was the cutest thing on four paws as ever I had laid eyes on, and he was all mine. The two of us became an inseparable pair, would take off on adventures around town, exploring the wilderness and parts unknown. There wasn't a stone we passed that didn't go unturned. I'd show him how to fish down by the local quarry. He'd show me how to hunt for squirrels, which, by the way, is much harder than it looks. Together we'd play and carry on. We were like two peas in a pod. Life was good. Now, of course, times weren't always so perfect. Like that time Dexter chased the mailman around the block and stole his sack of mail. We never did find out what happened, as it was never seen again. The incident, as it became known, remains in the folklore of Richmond Street to this very day. And how about that G.I. Joe toy chewing phase he went through? Ah, We lost a lot of good men that year. We certainly had our fair share of highs and lows, but through the thick and thin of it all, we remained best of buds. As the years passed and we grew older, Dexter began to slow. Instead of chasing the squirrels, he'd sit and watch them play from afar. He took up new hobbies like napping and chewing sticks he'd find around the yard. And boy, did he love those sticks. When he finished his way through the sticks in our yard, he would roam the neighborhood scavenging sticks from wherever he could find them. All that remained were circular patches of sawdust where he had gone to work. At night, we'd lay in bed and watch TV. He'd curl up alongside me and use my lap for which to rest his head. He'd stare up at me with heavy eyes slowly drifting off as I'd rub his belly. He always felt safe, secure, and loved when by my side. As did I. Then, a day came that no one could have ever prepared me for. It had started off like that of any other, but when I returned home from school on this day, there was no wagging tail waiting to greet me at the door, no long and slobbery tongue waiting to lick me all over, no ball waiting to be thrown. For that was the day my best friend, my most special friend, had passed away. Confused and saddened, I escaped to my bedroom where I laid under the covers and wept for what seemed to be days. Later that afternoon came a gentle knocking at the door. It was my grandmother. She had come to visit me after hearing of the news. She sat down beside me and proceeded to tell me the story about the dancing dogs in doggy heaven. Dancing dogs? I asked, while slowly wiping the tears from my weary eyes. Why yes, of course, she replied. She went on to explain. See, once a dog leaves this world for heaven above, they must first pass through the pearly white gates, guarded by its keeper, St. Bernard. Patrons seeking passage are asked but two questions. Have you found joy in your life? And has your life brought joy to others? Those true of heart are permitted to pass, she explained. On the other side of the gates lies a grand spectacle of dance and celebration, the likes of which you could only imagine. Dogs leaping through the clouds, twirling and spinning, paws frolicking along the enchanted rainbows overhead. A seemingly endless supply of sticks, as far as the eye can see. Truly a paradise in which a dog could revel. So, you see, the ending of one life is merely the beginning of another. Know that he's up there, having the grandest of times, 
And while he certainly misses you, he'd want you to smile for him. Years later, I still think back on those sage words of my grandmother. As I look to the sky above, I catch myself thinking of Dexter, twirling about, practicing his grand jeté, while dancing in the clouds of doggy heaven.